Paneloids Podcast. Paneloids Podcast. All right, what are we talking about today, Jeremiah? Saga. Saga finally returns after a three-year hiatus into issue number 55. Three For those years. of you who are, Jesus Christ. Yeah. For those of you who are unaware, Saga is a series written by Brian K. Vaughn, art by Fiona Staples. Came out originally in 2013. Took the comic book industry by storm. Storm, winning three consecutive years of Best Continuing Series, including 2013, for the Eisner Award, then came back in 2017 and won it again. Four-time Eisner Award-winning Best Continuing Series saga. It has been a long time since we've gotten a new issue. A lot of stuff has happened in the world. That's... That's for sure. Uh, So let's just put this out there now. This is spoilers. If you didn't read the issue that just came out Wednesday, this is spoilers for that issue. Yes. At the top of the podcast, I do want to congratulate Miss Fiona Staples on becoming a mother. It was announced at the back of this book in the letter page that uh, Fiona had a child recently. Congratulations. Uh, hopefully that doesn't slow your production of this book even more. Uh, I will but, actually uh, correct you there. That wasn't the announcing. At New York Comic Con, oh. the Brian K. Vaughn panel, he actually put Fiona Staples on video chat on the big screen. He actually got her to say it there. Oh, wow. Yeah, just to talk about that briefly. Obviously, they showed the cover that came out Wednesday. It was just cool just to see some preview pages. At his signing, he actually gave out a print of that cover, which was already signed by Fiona Staples, and he signed it there. Very cool guy, by the way. Just the coolest guy. At Baltimore, he was freaking cool. (laughs) Oh, yeah. If you're diving into Saga, the suggestion is to go the trade route. If you're going to try to collect the single issues, it's going to get expensive very quickly. First issue is very expensive. Fiona and Brian built breaks into the series because Fiona had a lot of art projects going on at the beginning of the series. She helped relaunch Archie with Mark Wade, which mm-hmm. gave Saga its second hiatus. Then all of her work is done digitally. It does take a lot of time for rendering and whatnot. There was multiple gaps, mostly three month gaps with an occasional six month gap. But when these gaps came, there was always a time jump, but they did a really, really good job explaining it in the series. Just keeping it super interesting. Obviously with a three year hiatus, we got a time jump for sure. It's not fully fletched out exactly how long it is. It might be four years. Hazel said she was 10 in this issue. Isn't she six, six or seven? I would say at least six or seven. It might be matching real time. Yeah, it might be matching real time. We get introduced to at least one new character. We get reintroduced to a bunch of old characters. Saga does not stop being Saga. With this issue at all. I saw um, a penis. Yes, there, there's a penis, there's a <laughs> sex scene, there's a very vigorous sex scene. Completely surrounded by a story. That's what Saga does best. Mm-hmm. It is an adult-themed comic, but it, it's all for story purposes. Nothing's gratuitous just to be gratuitous. Lana Sow in one just huge yeah. flash page of this book, but it's for a purpose. <laughs> Yes, 100%. To try to dance around the send-off of issue 54 is kind of difficult because one of the main points in issue 55 is the death of Marco, which really set this whole issue into motion. It shows the family struggling after he's gone. I was confused by the comment about Prince Robot, about how he was murdered, because I don't remember him being murdered. The will was on a cliff with Prince Robot. Mm Mm-hmm. Marco came across them. They were making up lies, trying to get him to let go of him. Basically the traditional, I have you by the neck. You're in front of me with a gun to your your head. Then the will ripped off his head. Okay. In letter pages, it was mentioned that we're going to learn the fate of Prince Robot next issue. Exactly Mm. how he died, I'm assuming. Or see his final moments. For all we know, though, his species, everything might be within the head. That's the the TV head. He might not necessarily be dead, just ripped off. On top of that, there was all that murmur about them switching bodies to be fish people. Bingo! He's most likely a fish person. Yeah. Also, in the head makes a lot more sense when it comes to his first wife with her death with Spire in her arms. The janitor. Amazing issue. I believe it's issue 19. Way back. Way back when. It actually got, issue 19 got recalled for the opening scene of that book uh, because it shows crowning. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was that issue? Yeah, the second printing has a different first page. Yeah, Spire's original mother is stabbed through the face, through the the big TV head. That might be the first notion that with their race, it's all within the head, which makes a lot of sense. That means we might still have Prince Robot. (laughs) I think we do. I mean, it all it all lines up. They set up for him to get a new body, and then his head is ripped off, and they cut away from it, and that was never seen again. 
I still will never get over the way Marco was stupidly murdered. Why did he have to look out the window? Yeah, I mean, he was a hopeless romantic, always. That That is how a hopeless romantic would meet his end. It appears that he is dead, 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 full stop. Although this it's, is comic, let's not forget it's comic. <laughs> that is true. Although his skull, the new issue was shown twice. The second time being the focal point with a vicious sex scene going on in the back. True. His skull does make a fantastic tattoo. It does make me think, hmm, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, we get introduced to this version of Goose. Is he this chapter's Goose? He's a throwaway to me. Uh, well, we'll see if he makes it through to the next issue because he's apparently going to be stopping these pirates. Also, that fucking pirate ship looks amazing. Yeah, that had to take staples a long ass time. Oh, man. I never forget how talented she is. But every new issue is just like, why can't you draw everything? <laughs> right, yeah. It just takes too much time. Yeah, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. I think we're going to get quite a few issues before we get a break now because of the huge break that we had. In that panel, he did state that the way they did this was purposely that this wouldn't happen again. It's planned to the end, in a sense. She's ahead enough. I yeah, don't they want get there. I, yeah, I, it's... I want Saga to keep going forever, but obviously it's planned to be 108 issues. Um, right, this is the halfway point in a sense. Yeah, we are we are just past the halfway point. Now, what I want more than anything that's not going to happen, I want them to pull a Walking Dead issue 100. Mm. What I would love more than anything, because there are only, technically speaking, there are only two artists who have ever professionally drawn Saga. What I mean by that is Fiona Staples has done every freaking cover, with the exception of one. There was a variant group back before variant groups were super popular because they're all over the place now. There was a variant group in 2014 that did a ghost variant for issue number seven. Oh, I remember that one. Drawn by Paul Pope. Good luck finding that. Yeah, and uh, that's expensive. Super expensive. It's almost as expensive as issue number one. But the other tricky part is finding the damn thing. I am not joking. I want a hundred covers for issue one hundred. I want a hundred different comic book <laughs> artists to do variant. Oh, Either cherry pick important moments of the series. Right. Because uh, I think that would be the dopest thing ever. It'd be the quickest way for me to spend $300 ever. Because it's $3 oh, yeah. an issue all day I would get every single one. Because there's no other real variants, right? There was the Image Expo for issue number, which is a beautiful cover that's only limited to 1000 That book is untouched. Mm -hmm. Then issue 7 has the Ghost Variant by Paul Pope. Issue 19 has a Diamond Retailer's Summit variant, which is the same cover as issue 19. It's just a postcard that says, wish you were here. That one's hard to find as well, not nearly as valuable. Issue number 19 is a great issue, a very important issue in Saga, but one of the most lackluster covers, in my opinion. Who's your favorite character in Saga's entire history? I know Lion Cat's the easy answer. It's always easy. <laughs> the look of it, again, with tattoo ideas, I've always thought of him. Mm -hmm. well, actually, oh. is it a she? It is her, her. right? It's she. Okay. All right. I got it. See, I corrected myself. The will. But <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> he was one of those villains where you love to hate whatever that corny you sympathize saying. sympathize the cause, but you weren't rooting for him. Yeah, now it's just kind of, oh man, you're really grimy. It's just, that's a hard one. It's definitely a hard one. I mean, Prince Robot was always cool. Just their species, generally. His character development as well, throughout the entire series, has oh, yeah. been absolutely yeah. incredible. Isabel, easily. Isabel, all day. I was still managing a comic book store when issue 36 came out. That is her death. She died, died. Mm. I distinctly remember comic book stores get books a day early. We get them on Tuesdays. I distinctly remember getting the order, immediately taking out Saga, immediately reading it, immediately <laughs> throwing the book across the store and walking home. <laughs> I dealt with the order first thing Wednesday morning. I was pissed. That's the thing about reading Saga month to month, is you get a gut punch every single oh, yeah. issue. Yeah. versus reading it in trade, which is nothing wrong with reading it in trade. If you're going to read any comic book series in trade, I suggest Saga, just because mm -hmm. it's going to be one big punch at the end of it, as opposed mm -hmm. to you getting a punch every single month. Oh, it's my number one recommendation to anyone ever. Oh, I kind of want to read comics, but it's just, it's either, it's overwhelming, it's intimidating, I don't know where to start. That is my number one recommendation. Because yeah. you get mature, that is meant for adults, you get some of the top art ever, you get this high fantasy. You see what comics are capable of. 
It's yeah. modern. If you want a non-superhero comic book story, go Saga. If you want a great coming-of-age story, you go to Saga. If you want mm-hmm. a good... Relationships are complicated. You go to Saga. <laughs> I have said multiple times that Saga is not my favorite comic book, but it is the best comic book I've ever read. That's fair. To, to be a baseball analogy... The Yankees are the greatest team of all time. Doesn't mean you have to. I love Saga, <laughs> but yeah, I, almost every issue is a complete ball buster, amazing issue. Every time a character dies, you feel it. It's mm-hmm. never, it, it's not, in my opinion, Game of Thrones where people just die. There's no just shock value. That it's important to the story. The great example uh, that just immediately comes to mind is Hazel's first love interest, that little gopher dude. Oh, right. When their planet was being destroyed, the issue ends with three black pages. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Holy shit. If they had done one less black page, it wouldn't have had enough impact. And if they did one more, it would have lost the impact. Just the three black pages. Oh, my God, it was soul crushing. Saga's Saga's the best. You got to go read Saga. You really should go read Saga. Brian K. Vaughn is an amazing human being. Pretty much everything he writes is amazing. Fiona's artwork is worth killing someone over. (laughs) <laughs> with this current brand new beautiful issue what is your takeaway with this new issue besides me not liking the new character i thought the opening scene of her stealing running from someone getting caught up with the police someone suicide bombing just that moment that opening scene to absorb she just kind of got away but that's her life it symbolized her life 100 like opening scene. Nail right on the head with that it's Rolling with the punches is what Saga is. It's yeah. whatever is thrown at you, you have to just take, take, take. Hazel appears to have become a little bit of a cunt. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the comment of before my father died, he said, if anything were to happen to him, that I should always listen to my mother. And you flip oh, the page. God. That doesn't mean I always have to obey her. That's perfect. Oh. Uh-huh. I keep calling back to issue 19 because it is, it is a very important issue. But the final scene in issue 19... It's such a powerful one. It's Marco and Lana hugging while holding Hazel in between the two of them. Hazel's narration says, this is the story of how my parents broke up. The way that Mm. Fiona and Ryan do that, it's such important story moments juxtaposed with the artwork that is meant for it is, Mm -hmm. oh my God, it's perfect. An example with this one is the the rocket ship is now part of the family. The rocket ship is being important. Is she communicating with her? She's just talking to it blankly. It's kind of listening. Talking into her blanket, it's doing what she asks. It changed the color of the mushrooms to answer her when she was okay, asking. Okay, that's question. what it was. Okay. That's such a cool thought process. The blue language is spoken a lot in this issue, which is Marco's uh, native language, which is the Mooney's length or wreath or whatnot, or where she gets her horns from, essentially. Brian Kivon has stated on multiple occasions that he has that entire language written out. Really? Yeah, how do you do Why? Because because he can. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> for what there's there's no real structural purpose in the writing of it. I mean that's why I love it too. Because once in a while I'll do an audio book, some other out there things, but it always comes out in science fiction. This is the peak of science fiction where you get really cool stuff and you get the goofy side of things too. Yeah. Where it's why does this character exist? How is that a functioning species? <laughs> they don't pull the punches when it comes to the dialogue either. It's not. It's not kitty talk. There's mm-hmm. a wonderful scene in issue, I want to say 27, where dragons are attacking Prince Robot's home planet. They kill it. It lands on the runway. One of the generals just screams, well, one of you overgrown condom failures get this dragon <laughs> off my fucking runway. It's, yeah. The depth of the story is just absolutely fantastic. In early issues, the will, which is one of the reasons he becomes so lovable, is he saves a little girl. He saves a little girl. She doesn't have a name. It gives her the name Sophie. Mm -hmm. Initially, you think, okay, this is going to come back. How is it going to come back? It turns out Sophie is the name of his sister. The brand's name is Sophie. Oh, right, right. Okay, yeah, no, yep. Then obviously what happens to the brand happens to the brand. It's actually Sophie's fault. The will kind of divides himself from her, but clearly he still cares. Right, he asked about her. He asked about her. Not only that, he was more excited to know what's going on with Sophie than Gwendolyn getting naked in front of him. I can't get over that scene. They're just they're just going at it. There's the skull just sitting there. Really? <laughs> yeah. The skull of her ex-fiance, mind you. 
Uh-huh. Or were they married? No, just engaged. There's just something engaged. with the ring, which I ha- I was having trouble remembering. Alana and, has. You can right. tell where the other one is when you're aware. Is that how she knew he was dead? Because technically they were off in space when Marco was killed, by the yeah, way. Yeah, true. That, that might be the the reason she figured it out. We might find that later in another story. Because with the rings, they could tell where each other were. That might very well. She knew it. That was it. and got out of there. Yeah. Which I don't know if they ever need to explain, to be honest. Yeah. There's, the other thing about Saga is it's all been written by, by Brian K. Vaughn. Similar to, to Walking Dead, everything was written by Robert Kirkman with the exception of one story, which was written by Brian K. Vaughn. It was the Walking alien. Dead. And... It, was in, it was in Barcelona, Spain. It tells right. the story. You eventually find out it's it's Rick's older. Oh, is it? See, I never read it. I bought it digitally and lost it somewhere. In... Marcos Martin. Oh, okay. Uh, it's fantastic. He keeps talking about how he's got to get to his little brother. Something happens to him. Shocker. He says, yeah, if you can find my little brother, he just had a boy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, cool. I, I'm going to have to take that, find that somewhere. Yeah, it's out in hardcover right now. I took it as it was going to be a digital only. I guess that would make sense. They printed it eventually. Yeah, they printed it many years later. I wish I had oh. brought it to Baltimore with me. I have it, but I, I didn't bring it. Oh, that would have been a good one. Yeah. I got the Why the Last Man omnibus signed. When he was signing it for me, he saw my Shadow Man necklace. He said, nice necklace. I turned into a puddle of goo on the ground. You should write (laughs) Shadow Man. A fucking idiot. Because there's no way that's ever going to happen. But yeah, Saga is absolutely fantastic. If you had to pick one moment in the first 54 issues that hit you the hardest, that you can remember, Mm -hmm. what would it be? It has been three years. Yeah, it's been a long time. There's been a lot of huge moments. The dog that was with the will that replaced Lion Cat. Uh, Big Red. Remind me how he how he went away. The dragon. The, he was trying to fight the dragon with the brand to get Sophie and Gwendolyn away with Lion Cat. That's how okay. he met his end. I normally, in real life too, care less about people, <laughs> more about animals. Yeah, he was the first companion that we've seen far to die. I wasn't fond of that. Yeah, that was a that was a not great. And of course, when he first kind of met Sophie, them alluding to what she was going through. I mean, that was kind of oh, not well. not even don't even want to talk about it. But and that's I think too why you said that's why he was a likable character. Yeah. But three years later, what he's doing now, when I remember the last thing he did, uh, he's not my favorite anymore. Apparently, it hasn't been completely fl- flushed out. But with the males of Marco's race, when their firstborn male has their firstborn, it starts the clock on the grandfather's death. Like, he will die Hmm. soon after his firstborn has their firstborn. Okay, I missed that. That's cool. Yeah, it was way back in the beginning of the series. Okay. Way back in the beginning of the series. When Hazel's grandfather, Marco's father, dies, there's just the scene of them flying away in a spaceship. He was a tailor. He made a bunch of clothes for Hazel. She makes a comment, because the narration is completely in the future. The narration is most likely the end of the series. Yeah. Where Hazel is talking, she's at the end of the series. She makes a comment that I still keep a part of it as a bookmark. It's issue number 11, I believe. Uh, It's the final scene where she talks about the clothing she kept from her grandfather that she never fully met. She keeps Mm. a piece of it as a bookmark. Mm. I don't know why, but that turned me into a blubbering mess. (laughs) crying i remember reading it i was managing uh, the store one day i was reading it i was just at the counter crying someone was trying to buy i was ringing them out that's what saga does to you yeah it's just perfect for sure it's almost well, weird that it's back like isn't it almost, almost weird yeah it reminds you of a better time right <laughs> yeah nothing good has happened since it's ended we can blame fiona brian for the way the world is right now. hey the back of the book give a mailing address write him a letter this is your fault yeah. It was really funny at Baltimore. We were talking for a little while. I was able to get him to get to Brian when he didn't have much of a line. I was thanking him for bringing me back song to just toot my own horn. I turn 30 tomorrow, the day of this recording. My fiance turns 28 on Saturday. I made a comment that it was coming out right around our birthdays. He said, you're welcome. I did it for you. I just said, a little <laughs> three years too late. He goes, well, I'm sorry. That's funny. Definitely go pick up at your local comic book store, Saga, issue number 55. Put it on your poll list. Make a poll list just for Saga, because it looks like we're not going to get any big hiatuses, hopefully, anytime soon. You can get gut-punched every single month. Just because I love my predictions. Oh, boy. Where do you see this going? 
just with this issue in mind, giving you some minor influence, having the you know known fact that Hazel lives at least to a decent age, mm-hmm. at least to be an adult, where uh, do you see it going? My prediction is this is just a random one. The pirates will have Petrikur, a part of them. That could be Prince Robot as well, because Petrikur and Prince Robot were trying to get to the new bodies together. I see Sophie Hazel confronting it at some point with Sophie being slightly older than Hazel she views the will kind of as a father figure if Hazel kills the will Sophie could be directly after Hazel I don't see Alana lasting much longer really yeah if if Alana makes it past issue 62 okay I mean not necessarily if, if Alana and Hazel being together lasts past 62 yeah. months. I don't necessarily disagree at all I do feel that being we're in the second half of things now, the mm-hmm. first was raising her, right? Yep. She's, although still 10 years old, is essentially who she's going to be. Her personality's there. There's oh, yeah. more to grow, but it's there now. It's there enough that she could run the issue you know, month to month by mm-hmm. herself. She could be the star. Yeah. The other thing with the narration with this issue, she's talking about this important time of her life. Something big will happen within mm-hmm. issue 61. Because they're going to break it down into six issue trades. She's told many stories about her life with Alana. There wasn't a lot of talking about Alana much within the narration. Mom was doing this or mom was doing that. Now they're drug smugglers. Yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense. She had a little bit of an issue with the drugs. Mm Mm-hmm forget what the yeah. drugs were called exactly what they did but when she was a tv star wrestler yeah. yeah it makes sense there's tying back to the past i'm really curious too about hazel's magical powers mm-hmm. like i hope they explore that more i think that's kind of my theory of because of the mixture of species her magic is going to be over the top yeah, and she i think that's the where they're gonna go one, kind of in a sense yeah it's gonna be almost uh i hate to say a luke skywalker kind of but something to that effect where it's, it won't be acknowledged, but it by the end of this series, it's going to be insinuated that everything's getting blown up. Everyone's killing each other, symbolizing the real world to an extent. But Gwendolyn being in a position of political power now, she already yeah. has a, a target for Alana Hazel. That's going to be a big part of it. They have to always be hunted. That's just, that's the book. Mm-hmm. They have to be hunted. Yeah. If they get separated, it's going to be real interesting. If Lana dies, it's going to be real interesting. I'm just excited for whatever's next. Oh, yeah. No, what a strong return, though. What a strong return. Not that there's any weak issues I could even think of, but how strong. Off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, perfect. The issue is extra long. Which was necessary. It's a thick bitch. It still kept the two ninety nine price point, which I appreciate. Yeah, Fiona doesn't miss a step. It came back just as strong as when they first left. There's nothing more that I, I wanted out of it. I, it's that flavor of lollipop you forgot you loved, but you always <laughs> wanted it back. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised this single issue right now, especially because of it almost has nostalgia, which is crazy. Yeah. It will be interesting to see when the Eisners come around in August, because we should have eight issues. We, we should have at least six issues in before the nomination comes up. Best continuing right. series, it, it could win it for a record fifth time. No series has ever won best continuing series five times in a row. Only three have ever won four times. You would know. Has anything had a hiatus? Been successful coming back? No. Mm, Because this was a hiatus. I know other things have been a comeback that wasn't necessarily supposed to come back, but the fans Mm. wanted it. This was a planned hiatus. To me, it's unique. It was also a planned hiatus, but the fact that most people listening to this don't know what concrete is goes to show you that it wasn't successful when it came back. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head. I don't think there's anything that it could survive a three-year break without having to relaunch at a number one or gimmick their way back into our hearts there's no gimmicks here there's no super crazy incentive variants it was an open order it wasn't a 9.99 blowout issue welcome back saga no it was the same old saga finally back this is the first time i will say probably in a few years where i actually had to read the issue the day it came out i was actually excited because everything else for me it's oh that's the read pile i know it's good but i'm not like foaming at the mouth to get my hands on it what comic has done that it's cool it's a cool thing oh read saga <laughs> yes <laughs> any closing comments thank you for coming back guys we really appreciate you i just Bring back Isabel. No, what I really, really want more than anything is to know that everyone that I want to be okay is okay. I want to know what's going on with Goose. I want to know what's going on with Petricur. 
yeah, I just, I want more. With the promise of the issue 56, 57 have already been solicited. We know there's definitely not going to be a hiccup. Even right. with the whole paper shortage, we're good. We're getting right. stuff. <laughs> That's my closing remarks is I, I just, I can't wait for more. How about yourself? Any closing remarks? Yeah, it's bothersome, especially because I've been doing a lot of buying paper, reading digital. In many cases, waiting for digital to come out six months later due to subscriptions. It's kind of a different world now. There's digital first, this that. But yeah, it's going to be hard to wait a month. If I can't make it to the store, digital will be purchased in addition. I, I just want to make one side comment about that. The thing about mm -hmm. reading Saga physically is important. The right. page turn is important to the series. Yes. Unlike many books who don't seem to care about it the way it should be yeah like I, I agree with that then spoiling a big reveal by it being on the right page when you flip to the left saga is very conscious of the flip yeah they've specifically added pages to trades to make sure that it still lines up with the, mm -hmm. with the yep. page so i've heard that all right well uh if you don't read it go read it i'm sure this is not going to be the last time we talk about this hopefully not hopefully we can have a nice discussion once this portion of the story is wrapped up in six issues we can discuss our reflection on it oh yeah all right panelized podcast panelized podcast funny side story one night me and maria had a long car ride she was talking about that since she's carrying the child, if we ever have kids, she's carrying the child. She gets to name the child. Okay, that's fair. Uh, she was throwing out a bunch of boy names. I was just, yeah, that sounds fine. I don't care. Then she's like, if we have a girl, her name will be Hazel. And I said, <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's perfect. Let's just, <laughs> let's not even discuss it anymore. She goes, you agreed to that way too quickly. Right, and she like, knew. Three, no, she didn't. It was three months no? later. Uh -huh. I was discussing Saga with someone. They're like, I really Hazel's development. She just glared at me. She's like, that's why you agreed, didn't you? Yeah, you have to.